Liz, before I ask each question, I will let you know long, how long your answer can be and a reminder that Scott is up front here too. Let's you know when your time is up, okay? You're welcome. You have one minute to answer this first question. Which political leader from the past 50 years besides Ronald Reagan do you see as a role model? Okay, thank you. Uh, probably not just one. There's a couple that come to mind. Uh, Teddy Roosevelt is a favorite, a personal favorite of mine just because of his experience. He was a rough rider. Uh, the guy was a, a police chief in, in New York City, governor of New York, uh, undersecretary of the Navy, which is a big point in my book. Uh, had something doing with the Great White Fleet, uh, sailing around the world with power projection. Um, so, and then besides that, he was uh, clearly vice president and then president and delivered a, a campaign speech with a bullet hole in his, in his side. So, um, I'd say uh, Teddy Roosevelt. He's a national park in my home state, too. One minute for your answer on this one. In what specific ways would you help to support and unite the Republican Party in this district? Well, I don't think that the Republican tent can be too big. We've already got a pretty solid base here, but... We need to reach out to folks, uh, maybe who aren't political, and, and let them realize and, and try to educate people to realize that the, uh, the scope of the, the debt that we're facing is quite serious. And we need to do something about it. And so we need to reach out to everyone we can, the folks here. We need to reach out to your neighbors, your friends. We need to get as many people we can in the tent. So uh, those, those are direct efforts. I think one of our uh, fellow candidates who's, who's maybe not participating at this point, Mr. Sotelo. Um, there's a gentleman that, that has a passion in his heart and, and I think would be a, a great addition uh, to the team. All right, Clint, you have two minutes for your answer to this question. Given the 8th District's vulnerability to natural disasters, what would be your approach for the funding of FEMA and the Army Corps of Engineers with our current budget crisis? In my Naval Reserve job, uh, we did a national level exercise a couple years ago, and it was actually to practice at the national level what would happen if we had a, a federal earthquake here in the New Madrid Fall. And so going through that, it brought two, well, one thing to mind for sure was the, the disconnect between the federal government and our local governments. And that was really vivid to me as I went up to a, a map on the wall one day, and they had uh, Camp Apache and, and Charlie and Delta and all these things on the map. And when I looked at the map, I said, well, that's, that's Kenneth, and that's Portageville, and that's Cape Girardeau, that's where I live. Um, West Side, you know, that's Salem, there's all these places. And they really have names, and there are people who live there, and, and they speak English, and, and they're pretty self-starting. Uh, self I don't know that we need to send a, you know, a whole lot of help from the federal government in there to help these folks. So we're pretty self-sufficient and industrious. Um, but as far as how do we fund that, that's a good question. Maybe we need to look at providing a, a loan to the state, no interest loan. Uh, if, if you don't have money, it's hard to give money you don't have away, and it's really not fair to print more, reduce the value of the money that you do have. So I, I think I would look at some kind of a loan program, no interest over however many years, uh, so you can get the relief in there that the folks need, but not penalize the rest of the country. All right, Clint, two minutes for this answer. What is your position on reauthorizing the 2008 Farm Bill, which expired September 30th, 2012, and please be specific? Okay. Um, a lot of things going on in the Farm Bill. I think, uh, you know, my family and I were <laughs> farmers. I've talked to folks down in the Bill. Um, the direct payments are, 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 I think, an issue that we all need to address. Um, I think crop insurance is, is that program is good and we should continue that. But let's make no mistake about it, 80% of the farm bill is, is eaten up with food stamps. That's uh, unintended. Uh, so we, we've got to look at every federal program. We've got to make important cuts across the board. There can't be any sacred cows. And we've got to, we've got to take a hard look at the dollars that we have and how we're spending them. So um, that's what I'll do. Two minutes for your answer on this as well. How would you support economic development in the 8th District? I think there's a couple things we can do. Um, at the state level, we need to support right-to-work initiatives. Uh, we're at a competitive disadvantage with our bordering states. And, and again, that's the state level. 
initiative, but I think at the federal level, our federal leaders can provide some guidance and leadership on that, on that role. Economic development from the federal level, the best economic development is a, it's a J-O-B job, and it doesn't come from federal dollars. It comes from reducing and eliminating burdensome red tape on, on you folks, small business owners and the workers, to, to spark in, in industriousness and ingenuity to create jobs. And as people get jobs, then they go off of the government assistance and they start becoming self-sufficient. So we've got to reduce the red tape, make it easier for people to create jobs, and, and make it uh, rewarding for them to do so. And it's a win-win it's for both of us. This is the last question. You'll have one minute for your answer. Glenn Washington seems to be in good luck. When, if ever, do you feel it's appropriate to compromise? So I think the problem is, up to this point, um, the conservatives have been compromising to the middle and we've been losing too much ground. It's time that we stand firm and we need, to, we need to push the meter over to the right a little bit to look at our fiscal condition and, and compromise. I agree, you have to have compromise to get things done, but not at the detriment of, of everybody else. I've talked to this, this um, the, uh, the fiscal cliff, so to speak. And we compromise, and what do we get? Higher taxes. Do we get any spending cuts? No. This country doesn't have a spending problem. I'm sorry, we do have a spending problem. We don't have a revenue problem. We, we have plenty of dollars that we bring into the Treasury. We, we are uh, hemorrhaging in spending. So we have a spending problem that needs to be addressed. And, and to compromise, to do anything other than to cut spending and to cut, cut government programs is, is disingenuous and sets our, our future generations uh, for uh, time, not for success. Okay, Clint, that is all of your questions, but you do have a minute and a half there to close the statements. Are you ready? Well, I'd like to thank you all for attending tonight. It's, it's great to see a crowded room full of like minded folks. Um, I'd like to thank the Pachyderm Club for hosting this forum. I want to thank the committee, men and women, who uh, are putting a lot of time and effort into this process. I appreciate your dedication and your professionalism. It's been a pleasure to get to know you and speak with you, and I look forward to looking to working with you in the future. Um, I also want to thank my family who's here, and uh, uh, most importantly, my wife in the back, Carrie. Thank you. Um, <coughs> when I joined the Navy, I raised my right hand and I swore an oath to support and defend the Constitution of the United States of America against all enemies, foreign and domestic. I fully expected and did get sent into harm's way to protect your freedom. Never in my wildest dreams did I imagine that I would come home and have to fight the federal government for that same freedom. But we do. And I will fight to protect the, the freedom that the Constitution guarantees every single one of us. So in that stead, I humbly ask for your vote and your support in that endeavor. May God bless you and may God bless the United States of America.